Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. Time for another devotional uh, together. We're going to be looking in uh, Luke's Gospel this morning. We've been talking for the last couple of devotionals. We've been talking about God's peace uh, coming upon our hearts in times of stress and trial. Um, this morning I want to talk to you uh, from Luke chapter 22. Uh, we'll be reading verses 14 uh, and 15. This is a very familiar passage. Um, it's about uh, it, it, it's it's in the set in the context of the Lord's Supper, and so we'll remember these verses as we read together. Um, I also wanted to mention you, many of you realize by now that the the church we will not not be having church on Sunday morning. Uh, we will be streaming it uh, again, um, and we our signs and our, our our notifications on Facebook and and uh, web website will will reflect this. We'll also post things on the news and. Our church sign uh, will also reflect this, and so um, we're asking that you uh, you keep us in your prayers, and we will definitely keep you in our prayers as uh, we wait uh, to for the time that we can be together again. It's a very frustrating time, a strange time in the life of, of the church and the life of, the, of this church, and um, we have to to bear this uh, together until we can be uh, together again. Um, uh, this. Uh, this verse that comes to us from Luke's gospel is a time that I, I feel like, I, 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 every time I read this passage of scripture, I feel the passion uh, that Jesus feels in his heart uh, when he says this to his disciples. And if you've got uh, Luke chapter 22, uh, it's uh, verse, uh, we'll start in verse 14, that I'm reading from the New International Version. It says, when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined uh, at the table. And he said to them, this is what he says to them. He says, I have eagerly, and I love the passion of the word eagerly. Um, I have eagerly, uh, earnestly, is the feeling there, desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And then I'll read the, the next thing. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And um, the reason I kind of land on this this passage, I, had, I was doing a Zoom call with some of the pastors from the conference, we were doing a residence and ministry uh, meeting, um, and and some of the conversation uh, shifted to what, how do we live out, how do we live these days as as a church, and different ideas kind of were being floated around about um, how how we did certain things, and what and the, and the issue of communion came up. Well, how do we do communion in a time um, like like this, and and one. A pastor suggested, well, maybe we can do like the drive-through communion where we have the elements set there and, and we bless them and then we have the elements set there and then people kind of drive through. Um, another one, another idea that was floated out was um, that we uh, uh, um, kind of bless it uh, in the church, we go to the like I would go to the altar and bless it and, and on camera. And then people in, in, your all, in all, all of our homes, we would have the elements there, you know, uh, the, the bread and the, and the cup, and, and then the blessing would be over all the elements. And I said, I, I didn't think that would work because I don't think God's work works through electronics. His blessing doesn't go through electronics. And I was just kidding about that kind of thing. And so we kind of laughed about that. Um, but then I, I started talking about, um, and, and a couple of people um, mentioned, maybe it's not a bad thing for us not to have communion for a while, um, as as these as these limitations are kind of placed on us as a church, um, maybe it's not a totally a bad thing for people to long uh, to be together for communion. Uh, maybe maybe the longing for communion is is not a bad thing. Maybe maybe we shouldn't try to band aid it and to do it kind of artificially or maybe in a lesser way um, until we can come together and have it. And it's full meaning. Um, when Jesus had com communion, the Last Supper, with his disciples, um, it was a it was a, it, a a big key component of it was to to get the togetherness. Um, it says he says I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you. So the the, the with you part of communion, one of the you know, it's kind of a hokey little thing, but to say communion, to define communion by the come and union. So come together and have union. And that's that's really 
kind of the the, the centerpiece of the of the communion um, ritual that that we're together, and it, it's that is that Jesus with his disciples, where he was taking the bread with them, and he was taking the cup with them, and he was it was the with them part that he says, I I long for that, I long for that. And maybe it's not a bad thing for us as the people of God to long, and we do long, to be together again. Um, maybe this is a good thing for Chapel Hill where we will, uh, this, this period of time, where we will more value the time that we finally can come together and, and hug each other and shake hands with each other and have communion together. And, and, and it's, I think it's a good thing for us to long for that. Uh, the, the church throughout the centuries acts, it acts very strange when limitations are put on it. Um, when the society around it says you cannot meet and the persecutions break out and when the people uh, are meeting uh, above ground and they're persecuted, then the church moves underground and, and still meets together, still clings together. And there's a tenacity that comes to a church that is told um, you can't be together. Um, there's a tenacity that says I, we long to be together. We have to be together. And so maybe that for us, Maybe this is a spark for Chapel Hill that God is sending to us and blessing us really with this with this um, gift of being apart for just a little bit. I, that sounds strange, um, but this gift of saying, I want you to long for each other. I think for too long we've taken for granted um, each other's love and in and, and this solitude and this aloneness and this loneliness um, we long to be together again. And maybe that's kind of what Jesus was, um, what was coming out of his heart when he said to his disciples, I, I, re I, I long to be with you. And I know I won't be with you again for a while, but I long to be with you. And that's kind of where we are right now as a church. And so uh, my prayer is that we would, that God would um, kind of nurture this longing in our hearts and would actually, this time of separation, would actually strengthen our bond and, and make us um, more of what the church is to be uh, in this in this community. So I'll, I'll pray that prayer for us now. Father, thank you for uh, your word to us. And thank you, again, we can set it as a foundation of the things that we're going through. And so we go back 2,000 years to the time when Jesus uh, fellowshiped in the most intimate way that we can fellowship with his disciples. Uh, when he had communion with them. And he used that word, um, I've eagerly desired to be with you. And that longing that comes uh, from that to our hearts today, we can feel that sense of longing for one another. And I thank you for that gift, and I pray that you would nurture that in our hearts, that uh, this longing to be together uh, will bless us, will uh, give us the grace uh, to be the church that you want us to be, that we need to be, I believe, in this particular time in, in history. Bless us as we are apart and draw us quickly, Father, uh, together again. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, this is our prayer for each other. Uh, my prayer for you is a blessed day, Chapel Hill.